My students and I have been working on a scratch music video that's set in uh, the time right after a AI apocalypse. Now, no apocalypse would be complete without lots of flames, but I looked around Scratch and couldn't really find flames that quite looked realistic enough for me, so I made my own. This week, I'm going to show you how to take a single wisp of flame and clone it into a beautiful bonfire or a giant conflagration. Let's get right into it. So I'm working on a project called Fire Generator. You can find the finished project link down below in the description. And I'm just gonna build this up bit by bit and explain to you how I did this. So we're starting off with a single wisp of flame here, which I've drawn um, in the draw window here. And you can see that I'm using a vertical gradient from an orange at the top down to a darker red at the bottom. And you can see that I drew a fairly long one here and then I've made it kind of flop to the other direction and get shorter and then to the other direction and get shorter and then in the other direction. So it's going generally from big to small and then I've drawn four more costumes with it getting bigger again until we were back to basically where we started from. So we're going to just clone this object several times and have each different incarnation of it be in a different costume. And between all this flying around and a few other little tricks that we're going to do, it's going to end up looking like the flame effect you saw in the introduction there. So for starters, we're going to hide this guy when we click the green flag. This is our reference object and we're just going to be making clones of it. Now, how many clones you're gonna need is something that's gonna vary. I'm gonna start with 30 here just to keep it simple, but in a little bit, we're gonna add some more. So we're just creating 30 clones of ourselves, and you can see when I click the green flag, here we are. And um, they're, they're all on top of each other right now, so that's why it doesn't look like there's many. So the first thing we wanna do is kinda of have them all spread out from this middle point. We want them going to the left and to the right and up. We want the bottom line to be stable though because we want the source of the fire to be coming from one location. So to do that, we're gonna to need to fix the starting location of this thing because as we move these things off, if we're gonna use random numbers, we always have to make them move off from the starting position. So let's just hardwire in the fire height and the fire width. And I've created two global variables for that. I'm setting it for 30 right now, but again, we're gonna be playing around with those numbers to create different kinds of effects. So we're just setting these two variables at the beginning. Now let's move over to when I start as a clone. So this guy is invisible, so let's make the clones show themselves. And now we're gonna tell them to spread apart. So let's set each one's X value. So let's set its X to be a function of the start X, but we're gonna randomize it. So we're gonna make it go to the left and to the right of that start X. How do we do that? Well, let's put the random number in here and we want the leftmost place that it can go to be start X minus a certain value. So I'm gonna use pluses here and we'll just add a negative number on the left and a positive number on the right. So let's go start X plus, let's go make it go like a width of 40 or something. So I'll go negative 20 to the left and positive 20 to the right. Let's see what that looks like. And you can see we've got them all arranged here and it's already looking a little kind of fiery like at the top here. Okay. We'll do the same thing with the up down. So let's grab a set Y and we're gonna do more or less the same thing to this with one little twist, which is that the start position is just gonna be zero because we, wanna, we want the bottom of this to be stable and we want the top part to be random. So we're gonna change this to start Y and again, we'll do uh, a difference of 20 here. So the randomness up, down, and left, and right is all gonna be 20 pixels from that starting point where this object is set up. Let's see what that looks like now. All right, well, we're already seeing something that looks a lot more like flames here. Wow, that's looking really cool already. So let's just 
drop the size of this a little bit. We're going to set the size to 50 right now because the top's going right off the edge of the screen. There we go. All right, so that's looking very, very flame-like already. Now we're going to start to animate this fellow. So we're going to go with a forever loop in here. And inside there, I'm going to put a repeat loop because every time I want to go around a loop changing costumes every once in a while, but in between these uh, these loops here, I want to make changes to the look of the costume. We'll get that into that a little bit. So we want to be repeating forever, but we want to be doing some costume changes and then changing the look and then doing costume changes again. Let's look at this with the zero point second weight and the costume change in here and see what that looks like now. Whoa, we're already looking very fiery. I think the vertical space is a little bit um, it's not really enough here. So I'm seeing gaps in the fire at the bottom here, and that's because we don't have enough flames in here. So let's increase the clone count. Maybe let's go up to 100 or something here and see what that looks like now. Now you can see how it's building these things one at a time, and it's taking a while to build the actual fire. One of the things we're gonna be doing to speed this process up is we're going to be putting all of this inside a custom block so that the clone creation here doesn't have to go around this loop a hundred times and do the animation. That's what's slowing everything down. So if we take this clone creation here and we put it into a custom block, watch this. We're going to go, we'll just do a block here that's called Make Fire. And we're just going to take the clone creation part of it in here. The other option I want to select when I'm creating my clone is I want to click on this button here called Run Without Screen Refresh. What that's going to do is freeze all the rest of this animation and just create the clones until it's done here and then carry on with the clone creation. This is going to incredibly speed up the clone creation process. As you can see here, when we click the green flag, there we go. Now we have our flame working right away. Now the problem is you can see how all these guys are wiggling in lockstep. Every one of them, they're moving around, but every one of them is moving in the same way and they're all wearing the same costume. So it's looking a little bit monotonous here. It's an interesting effect, but, but we want something a little more chaotic looking. So to add some randomness to this project, we're gonna have every single one of the clones start on a different costume. We've got eight to choose from here. So before we even get into this loop, I'm gonna do a switch costume. And I'm gonna tell each of these guys when they start as a clone to pick a random one of these costumes from one to eight. And you'll see right away that well, there's a pretty dramatic difference here in the way our flames look. Yeah, they're all kind of undulating and floating around, but they're doing it in a different order now. And so it's looking much, much more random, beautiful. So we could be done right now, but I just wanted to add a few more features that will just finesse this and make it look a little bit nicer. So the first thing I wanna do is Let's have each of these guys spun around a little bit. So I'm gonna grab a point in direction here. So these guys are all facing in a direction 90 as most objects are when you draw them, default on the screen. But every time we finish this loop of four costumes here, I'm going to change the direction they're facing a little bit. Now we don't want them spinning around in all directions, so we're going to use another random number here. So we're going to start at 90 and we're going to add a random value here. In this case, from negative 20 to positive 20. So every single one of these guys is going to be anywhere from 20 degrees off. So we're starting up like this and they're going to go between here and here and an arc depending on which way they start. So each one of them is going to be tilted just a little bit and let's see what that looks like. And it's gonna change its tilt every time that it finishes going through this draw loop here. There we go. So that adds a little bit more complexity to it. 
Next, we're gonna add some graphic effects to this to make it look a little prettier. And again, we're gonna do these all outside of the loop here. So let's go set a ghost effect here. And we're gonna do a ghost effect from zero to 50, again, a random number. So some of them are gonna be completely visible. Zero ghost means no transparency. And some of them are gonna be up to 50% transparent. And let's have a look at that now. There. So we've got some transparency in there and that's looking much more interesting now. Okay, great. Now let's add a brightness effect. So we're gonna make some of them brighter than the rest of them. And again, so I don't want them too, too dark because this is a glowing fire. So I'm gonna go have them go from a brightness of minus 10, which is a little bit darker than the original, all the way up to plus 50 which is quite a bit brighter than the original. Now you can play with all these numbers and you might be able to find something even more realistic than what I did if you just play around enough here. Let's have a look at how the brightness effect changes things. Oh yeah, so we got something much more chaotic looking in there now. Wow, that's really cool looking. So we're more or less done here. I did want to add a little bit of realism to this image though. So I've drawn quickly a little bonfire that I'm gonna show here on the screen right now. And a few weeks ago, I did a tutorial on how to create realistic smoke effects by cloning a little transparent dot like this and making it float up the screen. But uh, I'm gonna enable that as well. And let's see what our finished image looks like. And so we have a lovely looking blaze going here, which you can use in all kinds of different projects. So the last thing I want to show you is how to customize this fire in a way that's really easy. I went ahead and did a lot of the work for you by creating a custom block here inside the flame sprite that allows you to take some of these variables that we're changing around through the course of making this project and put them into bubbles here in this custom block so that we can very, very quickly reconfigure our fire. For example, if I wanna make my fire wider, I can change this width value from 40 to 100. And you can see how that changes my fire around to make it wider. Let's try making the fire taller now. So we'll take the height and we'll double it and move it up to 80. Now my fire is looking a little bit thin here, and that's because there's simply not enough clones here to fill the amount of space that we have here. So to fix that, we're gonna change the flame count and let's up it to 200. Remember, of course, that our maximum clone count is 300, so there's a limit to how big, how wide you're gonna be able to make these flames go. There we go, that's looking a lot more realistic. Great. And then the last thing we can tweak here is the flame size. And that's just the size of the sprite here. So depending on how close or how far away the fire is, let's make it a farther away fire. We'll change the size to 10% here. Whoops, and we'll have to change the width and the height accordingly. Let's drop the clone count down to 100 or so. There we go, and we will want to hide the, these uh, pieces of wood here. There we go, so we've got a little fire in the distance here, or we can go with a much bigger fire that's much closer to us. So let me change that, and again, I'll change the width and the height accordingly. We'll go like 50, 50, and see what that looks like. There we go, and now we've got a large fire. Well, I'd love to see what you guys can do with these flames. If you make something interesting, please share the URL of the file with me on my profile page. I'm at Mr. Tomek on Scratch. And anything that you uh, send me here, if I like it, I'll show it on next week's live stream. Have fun, guys. This has been an excerpt from the Chromeworks Technology Livestream. For more Scratch tips, tutorials, game reviews, and interviews, subscribe to this channel and make sure to tune in to our weekly live show, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern on YouTube.